The realm of Ultramar, otherwise known more informally as the 500 Worlds, is a sub-empire within the Imperium of Man, which is ruled over by the Ultramarines chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. Ultramar is in itself somewhat of anomaly within the Imperium, for not only does it essentially serve as the personal fiefdom of the Primarch Rebute Gilliman, but it also retains a surprising degree of autonomy and independence when compared to other planetary sectors, despite still ultimately deferring to Imperial rule. This sub-empire is separated into at least four distinct regions, each with its own capital world and ruling Tetrarch. Although the planet of Macrag, the homeworld of the Ultramarines chapter, is largely considered to be the capital of Ultramar as a whole. Ultramar is also noted for being one of the most heavily defended regions of space within the entire Imperium, boasting not only a highly trained and disciplined planetary defense force known as the Ultramar Auxilia upon each and every world, but also a substantial naval force known, appropriately enough, as the Ultramar Defense Fleet. As well as this, there also exist no less than 10 Space Marine chapters known with official records as the Shield Chapters, which are tasked with defending Ultramar from both external and internal threats. While these Shield Chapters may outwardly appear to be completely different from one another, they are all known to share one common trait, in that they are all officially descended from the gene line of Gilliman himself. This in turn harkens back to the days of the Great Crusade, a time when the original Ultramarines Legion both governed and protected the stellar realm from the enemies of man. The origins of the Ultramar Empire can be traced all the way back to the dying days of the Age of Strife, a period of human history where the majority of humanity's colony worlds became cut off from one another due to an unprecedented increase in warp storm activity which made long-distance interstellar travel an all but impossible undertaking throughout much of the galaxy. During this particular period of time, as the Emperor of Mankind neared the completion of his Primarch project, the Chaos Gods would tear open the very fabric of reality within the heart of the Emperor's gene labs, resulting in each of the nascent Primarchs being dragged into the depths of the warp. However, the Chaos Gods themselves lack the power to destroy the Primarchs completely and would instead, in an attempt to hamper the Emperor's plans, scatter his gene sons across the vast expanse of the galaxy, with a gestation pod containing the infant form of Rebuti Gilliman eventually coming to land upon the world of Macrag. After being adopted by a man named Connor Gilliman, one of the two ruling consuls of Macrag's capital, the young Primarch would quickly grow to not only become a highly skilled warrior and general, but a man who was all but unparalleled in the arts of diplomacy, making him one of the world's greatest politicians. Eventually, Gilliman would rise to become the sole consul of Macrag, where he would go on to usher in a golden age of both peace and prosperity for his people. In time, Gilliman would begin establishing diplomatic and trade relations with those worlds that lay within close proximity to Macrag itself, establishing the foundations for what would ultimately become known as the Ultramar Empire. Following the Primarch's eventual reunion with the Emperor and being subsequently appointed as the commander of the Ultramarines Legion, Gilliman would begin to further strengthen relations between Macrag and the other worlds of the Sector, slowly integrating them into the fold of his own interplanetary realm. However, this decision to create an empire was not simply due to a wanton lust for power or greed on Gilliman's part, but in fact had a more practical application. Indeed, the Primarch argued that a Space Marine Legion was so much more than just the warriors within it, in that it also included the ships that transported their material, the forges that fashioned their war gear, and the civilian worlds that provided potential aspirants with which to bolster their ranks. As such, the Primarch sought to bring more and more of the Sector's worlds under his control, so as to make the Ultramarines completely self-sustaining and thus ensuring that his legion would always be able to carry out the Emperor's will. While Gilliman's empire would in time grow to encompass roughly 500 worlds, the annals of history could have been vastly different if but one more world was brought into the Ultramarian fold, specifically the world of Nuceria. 
New Syria was a world that existed just outside the easternmost border of Ultramar, being relatively close, galactically speaking, to the Ultramarian worlds of Sotha, Espandor, and Prandium. The world itself was notorious for its gladiatorial games, where slaves would be forced to compete against one another in battles to the death for the entertainment of the world's ruling elite. The slave masters of New Syria would even subject certain slaves to psychosurgery, where they would install devices known as butcher's nails directly into their skulls, which in turn would amplify the aggression centers of their brains, transforming slaves into little more than frothing berserkers, which would only find peace in the act of bloodshed. While New Syria may have been regarded as being little more than a cruel and barbaric backwater world, unfit to be brought into the Ultramarian fold, the world would in fact prove to be more significant than anyone could have anticipated, for it was upon this world that the gestation pod containing Angron, Gilliman's brother and future Primarch of the World Eaters Legion, would come to rest, with the infant Primarch being forced to live the life of a New Syrian gladiator slave. Somewhat surprisingly, given New Syria's close proximity to Macrag, Angron was one of the last Primarchs to be reunited with both the Emperor and their respective legion, a fact made even more surprising by the fact that Gilliman himself was discovered relatively early during the course of the Great Crusade. Angron himself would prove to be an extremely violent and bitter individual due to not only the presence of the butcher's nails within his skull, but also his feelings of resentment towards the Emperor, which came about as a result of the Emperor teleporting Angron away from his fellow slaves whilst they made a last stand in their rebellion against the new Syrian slave masters. But given New Syria's close proximity to the borders of Ultramar, this raises an important question. What could have happened if Gilliman was the one to find Angron instead of the Emperor? The answer to this question would ultimately depend upon whether or not Gilliman had found his brother prior to or after when Angron was forced to undergo the surgical procedure that resulted in him being fitted with the butcher's nails. After all, as mentioned earlier, the butcher's nails were known to heavily alter one's personality, transforming one's calm and rational individuals into little more than bloodthirsty psychopaths. If Gilliman was reunited with Angron before he was fitted with the nails, and in turn prior to when Angron launched his rebellion against the new Syrian slave masters, then it is reasonable to assume that the Primarch of the World Eaters would not be as hostile nor as resentful to his father and brothers, for he would not have made a vow to die in battle alongside his fellow slaves prior to his rediscovery. This could have even resulted in Gilliman and Angron developing incredibly strong bonds of brotherhood and friendship, similar to that displayed between Fulgrim of the Emperor's Children and Ferris Manners of the Iron Hands, possibly even resulting in the two legions regularly fighting alongside one another upon the field of battle. As well as this, if Angron was brought back into the Imperial fold prior to both receiving the Butcher's Nails and subsequently instigating his rebellion against the new Syrian slave masters, then this may have even resulted in the World Eaters remaining loyal to the Imperium during the events of the Horus Heresy, as Angron would have had less of a reason to rebel against his father. Admittedly, however, if Angron never received the Butcher's Nails, then this would result in a number of further consequences in addition to those that would have occurred as a result of him being discovered by Gilliman instead of the Emperor. But given that the exact time frame between Gilliman's reunion with the Emperor and Angron's implantation of the Butcher's Nails remains somewhat unclear, it's entirely possible that Gilliman may have only come to learn of his brother's existence after Angron had already been subjected to psychosurgery. If Gilliman learned of Angron's existence as his brother was in the midst of instigating his rebellion against the new Syrian slave masters, then one of two potential possibilities could occur. The first of which is that Gilliman, much like how the Emperor himself would, would simply teleport Angron away from any potential battle that the Primarch may find himself involved in, so as to ensure that Angron was swiftly and safely retrieved by Imperial forces. 
However, if this were indeed the case, then events would most likely play out as they would in the actual timeline, albeit with much of, if not all of Angron's ire and resentment being directed towards Gilliman as opposed to the Emperor. But seeing as how Gilliman was noted for his diplomatic and potential mindset, it's likely that he would be at least somewhat reluctant to simply spirit his brother away from his fellow slaves due to the potential ramifications that could and would ultimately come from performing such an act. Instead, it's possible that Gilliman, along with the warriors of his legion, would convince the new Syrian slave masters that the Ultramarines should be the ones tasked with putting an end to Angren's rebellion. In this case, it's likely that Gilliman would meet with Angron face to face before offering to, effectively, take his wayward brother home. Angron would no doubt refuse to abandon his fellow slaves, however, perhaps forcing Gilliman to challenge his brother to a duel in an attempt to pacify him. This particular idea is in itself not entirely unprecedented, for Gilliman has been known to utilize such methods when dealing with similarly aggressive opponents. Indeed, during his youth, Gilliman would challenge the chieftain of Macrag's barbarous Illyrian tribes to such a duel, refusing to attack his foe and instead choosing to merely defend himself until the chieftain was simply too exhausted to continue, granting Gilliman the opportunity to put an end to the conflict through peaceful means. While Angron was quite possibly one of the fiercest, strongest, and most brutal of all the Primarchs, he would lack both the patience and martial discipline displayed by Gilliman, which in itself would grant the Lord of Ultramar a potential advantage during any sort of hypothetical duel. But since Angron is also a Primarch, then Gilliman would be unable to simply outlast his opponent until they collapse from exhaustion, which in turn would mean that Gilliman may very well be forced to actually defeat his brother in battle in this particular situation. However, because Gilliman is a diplomat at heart, it's reasonable to assume that he would not be as callous as the Emperor when it came to Angron's fellow slaves. Instead of simply leaving them to their fate, it's entirely possible that Gilliman may instead offer Angron's fellow slaves the chance to become integrated into his brother's legion and in turn aid him in carrying out the Emperor's will. Those slaves, both young and healthy enough to undergo the gene seed implantation process, could be allowed to undergo the necessary surgery to transform them into fully-fledged space marines, whereas others may be subjected to biomechanical augmentation similar to that experienced by Luther of the Dark Angels and Corfairon of the Word Bearers to convert them into, for lack of a better term, pseudo astartes those individuals who would otherwise be incompatible with the gene seed implantation process may be allowed to serve Angron's legion in some other manner, such as by becoming legion serfs or perhaps even being trained up to serve as officers within the legion's fleet. In the case of the latter, a precedent for such a scenario does indeed exist, as Nasturi Ephrenia, a childhood friend of Corvus Corax, the Primarch of Ravengard, would, following Corax's reunion with his legion, eventually rise to become shipmistress of the 19th Legion battle barge, the Avenger. But, seeing as how many of these former slaves, much like Angron, were also fitted with the butcher's nails, it's entirely possible that the presence of such implants would have potentially had some sort of negative effect in regards to the gene seed implantation process, even if fully-fledged space marines, with the exception of Psyches, were indeed fully capable of accepting such implants post-augmentation. As well as this, the presence of the nails within Angron's fellow slaves could potentially prevent them from being integrated into the Legion's ranks as serfs, due to the likelihood of them being regarded as too unpredictable and dangerous, although Angron himself would probably ignore any such concerns and continue to make use of them regardless of the theoretical dangers posed. But, if Angron's fellow slaves were allowed to be somehow integrated into the ranks of the World Eaters Legion, then this could very well result in Angron developing a close friendship with Gilliman, even if Angron may still harbor some degree of lingering animosity for not being allowed to take his rebellion to its logical conclusion. 
There is even a chance that Gilliman will attempt to find a way to safely remove the butcher's nails from his brother's skull without killing him, even if such endeavor is destined to yield little to no fruit. Indeed, even the Emperor himself, as detailed within the novel Master of Mankind, would note that any attempt to remove the nails from Angron's skull would ultimately prove fatal due to the implants now replacing a significant portion of his limbic lobe and insular cortex. As such, the nails, despite condemning Angron to a slow and inevitable death, were also, somewhat paradoxically, keeping him alive. Regardless, it's likely that in this particular instance Angron would not have slaughtered so many officers upon his immediate reunion with his legion due to the fact that his fellow slaves would not have been abandoned to die. This would however mean that Angron would still more than likely allow the majority of his legion's warriors to undergo the surgical procedures required to necessitate the fitting of the butcher's nails, should the world eaters once again succeed in creating their own, admittedly accrued variants of such implants, in hopes of becoming truly accepted by their gene father. However, whether or not these changes to Angron's story would be enough to prevent him from turning traitor during the events of the Horus Heresy is another matter entirely. If Angron ultimately chose to side with Horus during the events of the Horus Heresy and subsequently enacted his Shadow Crusade alongside the Wordbearer's Legion against the forces of Ultramar, this could once again result in Angron meeting Gilliman upon the field of battle much like how they would in the canon timeline. While Gilliman would more than likely be bested in combat thanks to the combined efforts of both Angron and Lorgar, the Primarch of the Wordbearers, if Angron had turned traitor in spite of Gilliman being the one to bring him into the Imperial fold, and assuming that the two had subsequently developed a close personal bond with one another, then this would most certainly rouse greater feelings of anger within the Lord of Ultramar due to such an act being an even more personal betrayal. While this could very well cause Gilliman to fight with an even greater ferocity than he otherwise might, he would still nonetheless be overwhelmed if he were forced to battle against two Primarchs at once, although in this particular instance Gilliman could possibly succeed in striking at least one of his traitorous brothers down as a result of his rage, although there is no way of knowing for certain. But by that same token, if Gilliman were to give in to his anger when facing off against his brothers, then this could quite possibly result in the Primarch's death, due to Gilliman's normally tactical and logical mindset being clouded by his emotions. Such an idea isn't entirely outside the realm of possibility, for during the events of the Eastwan Five Dropside Massacre, which took place in the earliest days of the Horus Heresy, Ferris Manus would be slain in battle by Fulgrim, due in part of Ferris's judgment being clouded by the rage that he had experienced after learning that his once closest friend and dearest brother had turned traitor. In fact, it was partly due to the rash actions and emotions of their Primarch that the warriors of the modern-day Iron Hands chapter would choose to embrace ruthlessness and cold logic following the events of the Horus Heresy so as to not make the same mistakes as their gene father, nor succumb to what they deem to be weaknesses within the human psyche, and instead replacing such flaws with a machine-like efficiency and brutality. Regardless, one can only imagine what other possibilities and changes may have occurred within the timeline if Rabuta Gilliman were the one to bring Angron into the Imperial Fold. We will never know for certain. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.